so here we are i'll just quickly introduce walking tree to anyone joining us for the very first time walking tree technologies is a technology focused company with a core focus on designing and building cross platform web and mobile applications mm -hmm. perform mm -hmm. system integrations and enabling digital transformation we also specialize in data integration data analytics and migration from legacy to modern systems our data analytics data and analytics consulting services help you unlock the strategic value of enterprise data and build an insight driven organization we help organizations with data strategy consulting architecture transformation on cloud and management services to unlock the strategic value of enterprise data and build an insight driven organization we help deploy data science predictive analytics and data visualization to gain insights for better decision making that was a little about us now about today's presenters we have scott abilasha and shubham with us scott is our cto and he's been a problem solver and entrepreneur and a technology leader for almost 30 years now under his leadership we have been able to establish a wide range of digital and digi uh, digital and data analytics capabilities and an enviable client centric innovation culture he's also helping our clients and the walking tree team with the big picture insights and new thinking that allow them to act decisively in solving challenges seizing opportunities and sparking innovative growth we also have abilasha with us who has over 16 years of experience leading high performing leading teams in building enterprise scale products and applications this includes over a decade of experience leading end to end design and development of sophisticated analytics solutions across diverse industry segments and lastly uh, shubham who has been with us for almost 4 5 years now and takes great interest in solving the last mile problems in analytics he comes with a hands on experience in ensuring continuous delivery of innovative software solutions now uh, before i pass this on to our speakers i'll just want to quickly remind you that we will have time at the end of the session to answer all your questions or any doubts or clarifications you need so please use the q and a box for that and uh, we'll try to address as many as possible so that's it from me over to you scott how are you doing today hey i'm doing great thank you prince you and i just want to <clears throat> thank everyone for joining and uh, i think you're going to enjoy today if you uh, and I, you're you're here because you probably uh care about analytics care about dashboarding that kind of thing and <clears throat> you know we're always at walking tree we're always excited to share you know what we've learned with different tools and uh either what we've learned and what we've used or even what we're just playing with sometimes but uh you know we get excited about technology so uh, and i think you'll see that with our our speakers today so uh both uh, avalasha and shubham have a lot of experience in uh, the data analytics space <clears throat> and as you can see with the slide print you has up now it's just one of the the four areas that you know that we put a lot of focus here at walking tree so uh we're fairly fairly serious about the data analytics and AI, AI and ML space and you know especially today you know what we're going to be going over with Apache superset uh, hopefully you'll be as excited about it as we are so uh yeah you can move on prince you that's good um so so just to kind of give you an agenda you know kind of know where we're at uh, where 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 the flight takes off and where it lands so uh, we'll begin by talking about the, some of the key characteristics of enterprise dashboards, and then we'll kind of work our way into specifically talking about Apache Superset and its features. And then we'll go in and do some comparison, right? So where does Superset stack up against some of its competitors, you know, both in the open space as well as, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the, some of the paid um uh, tools as well. So got a lot of comparisons, a lot of stats there for you. And I think you'll enjoy, uh, especially even after the call, uh, being able to reference some of those comparisons. So, and then we'll end this with uh, really enterprise feature configurations and enhancements. And so we'll kind of take you through that journey with, uh, again, with enterprise dashboards and 
really get into the details of Apache Superset and, and then specifically kind of end this with uh, the enterprise type features and configurations. So, uh, but kind of before we get into things on the next slide, I'd like to probably really do a, uh, a kind of a shameless plug for Walking Tree. Uh, the data visualization capabilities that we have. And I think too, what this will do is show you if you don't know, kind of where, you know, the dashboarding uh, and where Superset kind of, you know, fits into that whole data, uh, data journey and really data uh, ecosystem, right? So here at Walking Tree, there are a few areas that we'll define as far as data visualization goes. And the first of those is uh, in the BI and visualization tool space. So you've got things like Superset, Tableau, uh, Power BI, uh, Pentaho, QuickSight. So a lot of the different, so B Power BI, you know, being the uh, Microsoft product, QuickSight being uh, AWS's uh, dashboarding capabilities. And of course, everyone if, uh, has probably heard of, of Tableau as well. So some really good tools. Uh, again, Superset, we think is is one to be excited about uh, from an open source perspective. And then the other areas around IAM and SSO tools, right? So with those kind of things, you may have single sign-on tools like KeyCloak, which is a Red Hat uh, open source product. You've also got uh, integrations with like, you know, Active, Azure's Active Directory, Cognito from uh, from AWS, and then GCP's identity platform as well. So uh, those are areas we focus on and, and just some tools so you can kind of visualize some of the things that are in that space in, in regards to data visualization. Uh, and then you have uh, in the system logs and monitoring space, you know, you have the Elk Stack, you know, Elasticsearch, uh, Kibana, uh, log stash. And then, you know, for monitoring and dashboarding, you also have Prometheus and Grafana too. So we do uh, a lot of work in uh, in this space as well, as well as doing uh, custom solutions where we embed, uh, you know, visualization. So uh, things like D3, we also, you know, support the, the React, Angular, Python native type embedded uh, tools for uh, visualization. And then just kind of round out this slide, we really are a data engineering company, honestly. So we go from A to Z from the time you ingest to doing ETL or ELT all the way to where we're storing the data in some type of uh, a data store, whether that's a data lake, a data hub, um, or some master data management tools. Um, and then the thing that's not on this slide because it's specific to data visualization is the AI ML that we uh, use uh, that data for as well. So, so just to kind of give you a, a visual of kind of uh, in that ecosystem where Superset uh, fits in, but also just to kind of shamelessly plug Walking Tree and some of our capabilities uh, in the visualization space. All right, and we can we can hit the next one, Prince Yu. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so kind of getting into uh, the key characteristics of enterprise dashboards, we'll take a look, and these are some of the key characteristics, right? So just highlighting a few for you. And to begin that, uh, I like this quote by Stephen Few. If you, you know, Stephen Few does a lot of, uh, lot of work around visualization, got a lot of content out there. And I like this quote from him, and, and it's, it says, a dashboard is a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives and consolidated and arranged on a single screen so the information can be monitored at a glance, right? So the idea uh, goes far beyond just having a bunch of widgets, right? Because as techies, we can get kind of widget happy, but does it really mean anything? So I, I like this quote because it really means, hey, we are gathering the most important uh, information so that can, you can achieve your objectives. And most times, right, that's achieving your business, um, you know, your business objectives so that you can see your company and maybe you're in DevOps. Maybe you need a visualization of what's going on with your systems and your hardware, your infrastructure. So, but it's having all that information in one view so you can logically and clearly see uh, what your uh, objectives are. So that's the story. And I like this picture on the, on the right because 
not only does it show, um, you know, a, a one page, one screen view, uh, but it also, uh, the person has a, a, a coffee mug in their hand, right? So, but that's literally what you want to do. You want to just be able to go in, be able to visualize that and, and be able to get everything at, at one glance and, and not for the sake of having cool gadgets, but for the sake of being able to, uh, to view the most important things that you need to, to satisfy your objectives and get your objectives, uh, uh, your objectives viewed on one screen. So uh, next, let's get into some of those key characteristics of enterprise dashboards we talked about. So uh, again, these are not every single uh, you know, key uh, characteristic that you need in an enterprise dashboard, but these are some of the, the most important ones uh, that uh, that I believe. So the first one being, you know, support for for data warehouses, right? So we your tool needs to be able to uh, to look at information from many different types of data stores, right? So it's making sure that the tool has the flexibility to do that, and, and some of the major players in that too, right? So not just maybe its own, uh, yeah, you've got to have it in X database or this or that, but to make sure it really supports all the major. Uh, data stores that that might be needed um, to gather your your analytics from. Uh, the other thing that's incredibly important in a enterprise dashboard is does it integrate with all the major authentication backends? And we saw some of those in the previous slides, right? Uh, in that previous slide, so does it need to uh, interact with uh, you know with uh, Azure Active Directory, or maybe it's Amazon uh, AWS Cognito, or maybe it's G GCP's uh, identity platform, right? But does it integrate with those major authentication backends? Because authentication and then authorization is going to be key to uh, being able to support a company with different departments, different roles with, uh, you know, with different players that need to be uh, able to access different parts or different types of dashboards even. Uh, and that kind of plays into that next one and having an, an extensible security model, right? So you need to be able to have, for example, uh, you need to be able to have certain roles, right? So your C-suite of, of uh, executives may need to, to look at various things. Maybe they need to look at financials. Maybe they need to look at performance in certain areas. Uh, you may have a DevOps person who maybe they just need to see things on a dashboard that pertain to uh, how the system's performing or how the infrastructure is, uh, you know, uh, or things alarming, that kind of thing. So it, you want to be able to have those roles so you can se segregate them. So that's one thing around extens uh, extensibility in your security model is to make sure you can support things like that. Uh, the other uh, key area, right, is to make sure that the nowadays, especially, right, that you've got a kind of a cloud native architecture that's designed for scaling, right? So it needs to be able to be implemented with some cloud native tool so you can scale it easily. Uh, because as your needs grow or the data grows, whatever the needs are, maybe you've got several users that you need to support, uh, for example, but it needs to be able to scale. So uh, I, I encourage you to think about running this in a platform that's cloud native you know, for that reason. Um, additionally, interactive, you need it to be interactive, right? You need it so that uh, your your users can, can do exploration, maybe things like drag and drop functionality, but to be able to move those different items, widgets, whatever on a dashboard so that it's in a logical form that they can view easily and it, that it makes sense to whatever, whatever objective uh, that they're trying to meet for that dashboard. And then, you know, last item, maybe not not the least, but uh, the last item I'll talk about here on uh, some of these key features is, you know, can you bring things out of that dashboard? So having the dashboard is great. It's a critical functionality nowadays, right? But also, can you download information from that? Can you share that in some way? Uh, can you set up email scheduling and those type things? So I call it breaking away from just the dashboard and being able to see and have a view that you can share with others. And, and maybe that's to share a view of the dashboard even, but but even things like sending emails and those type things. So you need to be able to share those dashboards and get it off just your screen. Uh, so those are some of the key uh, features that an enterprise dashboard supports. 
And I think going forward in our presentation, I think you'll see that superset uh, supports these items and then some. And so, you know, the next one, I'm going to turn it over to, to Shubham to really start getting into the features of Superset, which I know that's why all of you are here. So, Shubham, with that, I'll hand it over to you and uh, let's let these folks uh, hear and see uh, all about Superset. I'll be sharing my screen. Hope my screen is visible. It's loading. There you go. It's visible. Thanks, Scott, for the great introduction. I will now be discussing the features of Apache Superset and how it satisfies most of the enterprise visualization requirements. So Superset is an intuitive, provides an intuitive interface to explore, view, and investigate data. And there is a reason why I highlight these three terms uh, separately. Generally, most visualization frameworks, most dashboarding frameworks give you a feature where you would make certain reports, save them, and then be able to interactively explore those reports. But you may not always have the facility to drag and drop your feeds. And even though you may have facilities in some of those tools, the problem comes when you drag and drop large data sets where it takes endless time to return results and in that time frame your queries time out superset has been designed considering those vital requirements so it is not just a dashboarding tool where you will actually make charts and save those charts and then see the updated results every day it will also allow you to explore your data in the way you want drag and drop the fields you want and also be able to get the results for you in a reasonable time frame. The only limitation which uh, can come can come from your database, but it won't come from Superset, as I'll talk about uh, shortly. Not only that, in your in case you are not just satisfied with dragging and dropping and saving your data and interacting with it via dashboards, you can also use SQL to query your data for getting more and more information. So while most of your requirements should be solved by doing a drag and drop that's a no code framework just in case you wanted to get a deeper view of the data you wanted to do some comparison between two tables or maybe do something else where you feel that drag and drop may not be as useful and you want to have a greater insight into your data you can also do that using superset superset provides you that capability one of the great things about superset particularly when you compare it with other uh, visualization frameworks is that it provides you a large number of charts off the shelf and that number grows day by day also because superset is open source most visualization tools would provide you the common set of charts which include bar charts line charts pie charts uh, sunburst plots etc etc but there are fewer tools which are able to provide you information whereby uh, as in visualization whereby you can actually view the different stages of your business. So charts like funnel charts, Sankey charts enable you to understand the different stages at which your sales may be going on or for example, which, you, which your employees may be working at or whatever product you have, how the product is transitioning, how the dynamics around it do that product are transitioning. You will be able to see that using these native charts provided by Superset. Whereas in other cases, you will have to build these charts in an another using an another tool which is uh, which may not be that intuitive of course geospatial charts are one of the most popular charts for any dashboarding framework but unfortunately other dashboarding technologies do not provide as many geospatial charts as superset does so in that context also superset fares better over other visualization frameworks as i mentioned this exploration of data in superset is code free so you need not understand sq you need not know sql uh, you need not be a developer for that matter. So you design dashboards, uh, the developer in your organization designs dashboards and you give it to your BI team, you give it to your analysts and they just use drag and drop to understand and uh, explore data in different formats. So it's not tables which come out when you drag and drop, you can also 
very quickly export those tables or rather present those tables in different kinds of charts. So superset allows you, gives you the freedom to not just drag and drop and see in Tableau format, whatever you want, but also at the same time, do that in any kind of chart that you want. It provides a word class SQL ID for developers who want to query data further. And as I was mentioning uh, a couple of minutes ago, superset will allow you to query any big data source as well. One of the problems which are commonly faced with dashboarding tools is that when you start loading data, when you start presenting data, which is very big, the response is quite slow. And that is for two reasons. One is that the queries which are running to fetch to return the data will themselves take some time. But on top of that, that there is a layer, which is, which there's this layer of this visualization tool, which will have its own overhead. And it is where superset provides a great improvement. So the semantic layer which superset has, it's very lightweight. So the only bottleneck which you can face while displaying information, which is coming from a big data source will be the one which is at your data source level. So if your data source, the queries which are being uh, run are taking a lot of time, of course, superset will not be able to accelerate, accelerate on that, will not be able to accelerate that, but then uh, whatever time they take, superset is not going to add a big head on on top of it. So your rendering capabilities are as good or as bad as the rendering capabilities or the, rather the query return time, response time, execution time of your data source. And superset provides out of the box support for most SQL speaking databases. And as I'll show for NoSQL databases also, you can uh, have a workaround by using query engines like Reset, uh, uh, Presto and Prime. So I saw, I show here some visualizations which are possible in superset. So in superset, you can use, of course, common kinds of charts like area chart, uh, box block charts, bubble charts, uh, core diagrams, time series charts, etc. And you can use some uh, special kind of charts which would help you visualize certain kinds of data. For example, you could use a bubble chart for certain scenario or maybe a tech.ci polygon chart or maybe a time series chart depending on what kind of data you are looking for. So what we have seen is there are, there are, it depends on the domain which you work at. So in case you are working, say in pharmaceutical domain or insurance domain or finance domain and BFSI domain, or uh, uh, each domain has its own uh, requirements. So there are cases where you need to really show the flow of data, how it moves across different stages. There are areas where you are more interested in the percentage of flow, how your numbers have stacked up over different years. So there are different uh, tools, sorry, there are different visualizations which are best suited for each use case and superset provides it variety. As I mentioned, superset allows you to interactively drag and drop your, the fields of your choice and be able to see the results in different formats. So you need not know any query language for that. Any analyst can do that. And for people who want to drill down further, not just in terms of being able to see the data in different charts, but also have a deeper analysis of different tables by joining, comparing, etc. as in writing more advanced queries, superset will allow you to do that. So the thing is, as we have seen, most analysts like to have a no code functionality, no code, low code functionality, whereby they can just drag and drop. However, they would also like at times to be able to customize or maybe add certain filters beyond what is provided natively and the query editor will allow you to do that. Uh, I was talking about the capabilities of superset in terms of uh, being able to render information from large databases. Uh, superset has a, a, a superset is uh, an open source product as well as on front end and back end. And uh, the back end in superset is such that it provides you the facility to do uh, with to, do, uh, to handle your large query times with the help of asynchronous caching. So what happens? If you are uh, running queries which are taking a lot of time, you have to ensure that your timeout doesn't happen because of the web browser settings. And in that case, you can enable asynchronous caching. Asynchronous caching, caching will ensure that when your queries return results, which will be over some time, because in some cases, the time will be, the queries will take, take time to return results to various huge data. Then your browser doesn't uh, create a fiasco. So 
this is asynchronous caching will ensure that whatever data is rendered by the queries uh, in the longer time frame that will also be retained and persisted and that will be visible it has an extensible security model which means that you can allow for different kinds of rules uh, within your organization for people who are at different uh, levels so a certain class of people will be able to see certain uh, kinds of charts and uh, others will not be allowed to do that. Moreover, you can implement row level security where in the same table people can some people can see all the data, whereas others will be able to see a limited uh, extent that will be able to see data to a limited extent. One of the most important enterprise features of Superset is that it allows integration with major authentication backends, and this is this feature actually which uh, really makes it much more attractive versus with other open source technologies as I'll discuss later. So you can integrate with, uh, you can authenticate with your database. You can do authentication using LDAP, using auth. You can do Google SO, SSO, you can use OpenID, or you can use your remote remote user portfolio. So there are, there are different ways in which you can authenticate with superset. So uh, no matter what authentication system you're using in your organization, you can just embed it in superset. Uh, since it is open source, it will give you the ability to add custom visualization plugins. And uh, as I'll discuss shortly, this actually makes it outcompete other new and old dashboarding technologies in response time. And it allows you, it provides you an API for programmatic customization. So uh, since it has its backend, which is in Flask, uh, I mean, Python and Flask, so uh, you can use the backend, you can use uh, the APIs which are generated from that side in in your other uh, programming use cases, as Abhilash will show later. As Scott was mentioning, an enterprise data uh, visualization solution should be one which is highly scalable. So uh, organizations are not two or ten people. Uh, I mean, they don't have two or ten users. They have hundreds and thousands of users. So Superset has that functionality whereby you can actually ensure that it is highly available where you can scale it in different environments and organizations which are using superset right now some of them are indeed using uh running superset in production clusters uh, on kubernetes and they are having hundreds of users who are concurrently accessing those dashboards in real time so of course there's a concurrent uh, access so there are other frames which what, what i've seen otherwise is when you have the same dashboard on your local, it's easy to set up something on your local, but the moment you have hundreds of users who are, want to access that information in a concurrent fashion, those things fail. And uh, they fail for multiple reasons. And one of them is, of course, the fact that uh, the way your tool is being orchestrated, your your solution is being orchestrated, it doesn't support containerization and it isn't fit for uh, Kubernetes. However, Superset has been designed to support that requirement works very well, it scales out in large distributed environments, it works well inside containers. It is one of the few in, uh, solutions which you can contain, rise and run very smoothly. It has been tested in large environments uh, with hundreds of concurrent users. So organizations like BNB use uh, Superset in production uh, and with hundreds of users accessing those dashboards. Superset, being an Apache product integrates very easily and very well with another Apache product, which is eCharts. And this provides a smooth end user experience, particularly for those cases where you have a low bandwidth connection and there's a double whammy. On one side, you want to query a large amount of data. It is taking time to return results, but then you may have a, you may not have a great bandwidth as in a great internet connection. You may have other problems also. So not that it only has a lightweight semantic layer, but even when you render that information, uh, you can use eCharts and each arts has been found to be much better in performance for uh, in terms of fetching results when compared with other charting libraries like NVD3, high charts, and C3. So the databases which are supported by Superset include the, of course, they include the most widely used data warehousing solutions. So as Scott was mentioning, an ideal enterprise tool is which support visualization tool is one which supports the enterprise data warehouses and the enterprise data warehouses are your Snowflake, they are your Redshift, they are your Google BigQuery, uh, they are your Snowflake. Those are supported by Superset, and you have other uh, 
commonly used databases like Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, of course, all these are supported. And then other databases which are used for more special requirements like uh, Vertica, I mean, analytic databases like Vertica and uh, Yuga Byte, Firebird. These, th there's a wide variety of data sources which you can use in Superset. There are other data sources like MongoDB and Cassandra, which are NoSQL databases, data sources, but you can as well use them in Superset by exposing them through query engines like Trino and Presto. So I will be now doing a comparison of Superset with other major visualization frameworks. Uh, I'll start with the paid tools, which in this case, uh, I have taken up the most commonly used, uh, most widely used uh, paid tools, and they are Tableau and Power BI. So of course, the Superset being open source is free. I mean, your only costs are the running costs of the Superset instance, of the instance where you deploy Superset. Whereas uh, Tableau and Power BI, uh, Tableau is the costliest in that uh, list, as in if you compare with other features, if you take those into consideration. And uh, Power BI sits somewhere in the middle. Since Apache Superset is free, it's open source. Uh, since it's open source, you can also easily extend it. Of course, you can't do that with Tableau and Power BI. Oh, sorry, since Apache Superset is open source, you can easily extend it. You, can, you can't do that with Tableau and Power BI. And Superset provides you native SQL support, and for NoSQL, you can use query engines like Trino and Presto, whereas Power BI and Tableau provide their support uh, natively. Uh, when it comes to handling large databases, which is a very, very, very important concern, so we have seen that Power BI, there, most visualization tools, as an open source visualization tools like Pentaho, for example, they fare bad when you have to handle large data, but uh, Power BI is better than those tools to some extent. However, even Power BI, if you have a very large data set and you try to load it in Power BI, it will have problems. Tools like uh, uh, Tableau, we are much better in that context, much better even in Power BI. But when it comes to Superset, as I was mentioning earlier, Superset has been designed to take that, uh, uh, has been designed keeping that consideration in mind. So it is very good for handling large databases because it is a very thin semantic layer. So your only bottleneck is your database. One advantage of superset vice versa uh, tools like Tableau is Tableau is generally very difficult for beginners. People who have used Tableau know that the best. Whereas uh, superset is far easier to understand and its superset is intuitive. I and mean, anybody who sees superset as will also show that later in the call uh, finds it very intuitive, very professional. Those charts are quite professional and you don't really need good tutorials to be able to understand and execute that. Uh, tools like Tableau and Power BI provide you a drill down capability where you can actually see the data at different levels of hierarchy. In Superset, since hierarchies are not supported and explicitly so because uh, uh, they have a different way of organizing data. So in Superset also you can drill, uh, but that drilling is not a drill down, it's a drill by or a drill to detail. Where you actually click on each element of the chart and see the further details associated. So those are not maintained in a hierarchy fashion, but then they're as good as uh, observing information in a hierarchy fashion is just that you need to uh, segregate that information in a uh, more regular fashion. As Superset provides uh, uh, an API for programmatic customization, so the dashboards which you have, uh, whatever APIs you have, you can consider your dashboards as code. Essentially, you can use a Flask backend and use it anywhere on top of. Uh, and you can use any other framework, React.js or any other thing, Angular on top of it. You can have those backend APIs, whereas for Tableau and uh, Power BI, you will essentially not have them because of course uh, they are rendered internally. When you come when you come to open source tools, so what I discussed with, uh, what I, the comparison which I did just now was with respect to paid tools, but then there are other open source tools, other so popular open source tools. Uh, when you compare them with Superset, and here I have taken two very open, very popular open source visualization frameworks. Uh, recently, they have become popular. So one is Metabase and the other is Redash. So uh, each tool for that matter has its own strengths. And uh, when it, if you just want to consider from the perspective of uh, common charts, all tools are good. Uh, there are there are certain kinds of charts which are available only in Superset or only in Redash, uh, Metabase fares the worst there, Superset and Redash are almost close, but Superset is better in terms of uh, customization. It provides you a clear documentation and adding your own visualizations. 
the default charts in superset the number of default charts is also more and as i said it's 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 a much more active community and uh, also because of the integration with e-charts it's growing even faster uh, the geospatial charts which you have in superset are greater in number and if you were to use three dash or metabase you would really have to do a lot of hard work in uh, considering how would you present that kind of data which would rather better be rendered in a map which is not available uh, there and only available in superset uh, when it comes to data sources, again, superset is as good as Redash or Redash is as good as superset, uh, but, and in NoSQL databases, uh, well, Redash is slightly better, but again, with superset, you can do the integration with NoSQL databases using query engines like Prino or Presto. Uh, in terms of these query engines, uh, superset supports the most query engines, uh, whereas as in it supports five query engines, whereas Metabase supports three and Redash supports three. So overall, from a, from a visualization perspective, Superset is better. But from a database, uh, from a data sourcing pers uh, data source perspective, uh, unless you want to have native support for NoSQL databases, Superset is better. So if of course you want to have a native support for NoSQL databases, in case you don't want to depend on another query engine, then uh, uh, Redash is better. But then the place where superset wins hands down is one way you need to do the authentication so at the end of the day your dashboards uh, are not built in silos they are not to be rendered only to you i mean you don't develop them on your local and expose them on your local browser only they have to be shared with different users and uh you have to ensure that the whole security so unless you have a proper authentication there is no point of security i mean security starts with that uh Superset allows you to actually do authentication with maximum frameworks. So if you consider here, here I've chosen Google authentication, LDAP, OpenID, and database. Whereas Metabase only allows you to do authentication with Google Auth and LDAP. And Redash only allows with the Google Auth. Superset allows you with all the four frameworks. So whether you're using Google authentication or LDAP or OpenID or database authentication, Superset will allow you to do that. And in that case, it is much better. Uh, so the actual choice of a database technology uh sorry a visualization technology will depend on one's use case for sure so uh what kind of uh, an authentication system do you have to integrate what kind of data sources are you running uh what kind of uh do you want a low code solution where your where your teams can just interactively explore data without writing code or well uh, if you if you see the comparison between apache super, super set and power bi uh how much investment are you willing to make in making your team understand and work with these visualization technologies all of them decide all of these factors decide uh, the right choice of technology but what i can uh, say for sure because power bi is sorry Apache superset is open source it has a strong community vibrant community uh it allows you to handle very large data sources also quite well it allows you to integrate uh, with eCharts, which is a very powerful rendering engine. And it, of course, uh, also enables integration uh, to NoSQL databases through uh, Presto and Rhino. So uh, most requirements of modern enterprises can be handled with Superset. Unless, of course, uh, enterprises want to stick to older solutions, which are like, uh, which have a history to them. But as as different organizations which we'll see later have started already moving to Apache Superset, uh, I'm sure in the coming days Superset will be used more and more often. Here I'd like to hand it over to Abhilasha to discuss the enterprise feature configurations and enhancements which are possible in Superset. Over to you, Abhilasha. Uh, thank you, Shivam. I'll just share my screen. Uh, yeah, so that was a, a great introduction, Shubham. So um, as uh, as you all got to know, like the different features that Superset is providing. Now we look at uh, these things, like these enterprise features. Like if you you if you have to build an enterprise grade dashboard, then what are the must have things and how uh, these are provided in Superset? So to start with, uh, like if you talk about the architecture of uh, 
superset. Uh, it gives you the flexibility to choose the different components of the architecture. Now, um, it's like you need the, the web servers who are the actual uh, uh, face of your application. Now, again, uh, you can have uh, Superset recommends to use the Venicon in async mode so as to be able to handle multiple uh, concurrent requests and be highly scalable. Uh, then with the, uh, to support the web servers and uh, to have the base of all the metadata, like the different columns, the different charts. So all the chart related metadata, the queries, et cetera. So that will be stored in this uh, database store uh, for metadata. And by default, this would be SQLite, but then you can, for a production environment, obviously uh, you would go for a much mature database like a Postgres, <coughs> sorry. Also, if you have a requirement there, you know that there, uh, and in most production environments in enterprises, that will be a reality that you would have long running queries and you would need to uh, ensure that your user is not blocked because of a long running query. And that's where this optional uh, stack, which you see here, uh, is very important, which provides the capability to add a message queue. So basically, uh, whenever there's a long running query, it is uh, the worker, uh, the, so salary is used for this. Salary is a, uh, an asynchronous job queue, which will handle all the asynchronous things which are taking long time. So you push it to the salary uh, stack and salary has a worker and a queue part to it. So the worker will pick up uh, uh, like jobs from the queue and keep processing and then the results from that will be pushed to the data store. So there will be a data store here. And then uh, this will be synced with your uh, data to be able to shown on the web server. Now, and the cache is another very important enterprise feature in order to ensure that uh, quick turnaround and uh, low latency. So you have the choice to pick your cache, uh, your uh, caching layer whether it is Memcache or uh, Redis, you can go with it. So with this flexibility and with this scalable structure, uh, which uh, Superset enables you to choose, you can build uh, like enterprise grade dashboards with no uh, difficulty. Also, uh, so uh, obviously, as I mentioned, the web servers are giving you the high level of concurrency and uh, uh, high, uh, uh, no lags. So uh, with this, now we move on to the next feature and uh, that is feature configuration. So when we talk about customizations, because every enterprise will have their own specific needs and uh, for everything you, you would not like to write lots of code. And that is where Superset is a winner in this aspect also. So it provides, so it has been structured in a way that many of these uh, attributes are defined as parameters in the, so by default, it is defined in the config py file of your superset, uh, like the installable uh, version. Now, if you want to uh, change or override that parameter, so you would create a, a file called superset underscore config dot py and whatever uh, features you would write in this file that would override your original and that would give you the flavor of configurations which you want. So you can actually um, add that for any enterprise based on the need. So different things like, for example, uh, whether you want to use, say, maps. So Mapbox, uh, uh, Mapbox plugin or feature has to be enabled. And then uh, whether if you want to use alerts, well, of course, it's a mandatory thing, but then um, that is another thing which is controlled by uh, your superset config. Now, when we talk about the other things like your uh, database configuration, so the SQL Alchemy database URI. So this is a feature which is by default your SQL. So this is your uh, metadata, uh, which we were seeing in the earlier slide. So by default, it is SQLite. Now, if you want to change it to so, say Postgres, MySQL, whatever, you can provide the details of your uh, production in the 
uh, by setting the value for this and that would override and uh, be used. Uh, also sometimes like uh, for security purposes, you would want like very stronger restrictions on your user and you maybe for the admin also you want to restrict few things. So that if that level of security has to be added, that could be done only through configuration. And that is where, so there are feature flags available for that as well, where you can control, uh, where you can apply stronger security restrictions. So um, if we move on, so as we see the other things also, like alerting and reporting. So again, uh, this is not available by default, but then you can enable it by setting the, uh, there's a flag for this. Uh, and then you can set the, so if you have to use email, so you would have to set up the SMTP details and all those setups can be easily done in the configuration part. So uh, these are uh, some, uh, you can say uh, customizations which are made easy for the uh, user to be able to uh, choose as per their needs. Now in alerting, so you have a capability to send alerts based on specific database conditions, or you can schedule reports. So, and this uh, this capability is again handled by the salary beat and salary workers. So they are, they are the, that uh, stack is the one which handles all the scheduling and reporting. Uh, moving on as uh, Shubham and Scott, both of them mentioned this, and this is a really very important aspect with, which all enterprises look for a single sign-on because uh, having different applications, uh, having to remember so many uh, passwords and like having the security constraints, it's always better to have a single sign-on across your applications. And what better could it be that you can apply the same to your uh, visualization tool as well. And that is very seamless in uh, Superset. So by default, it will give you the database uh, authentication type wherein you can just give a username password to log in, but then uh, it enables. So by configuration, we can set all these, be it open ID, if you have to use say a Gmail or you, Yahoo, or an LDAP server support, wherein uh, if you want to uh, authenticate against your active directory, or if it's just a remote user for some web server environment variables, where uh, it has to pick up from the environment variable and then uh, log in. Uh, for remote access or uh, the OAuth authentication. So all this is available. It's just that it needs some configuration change and some uh, some small amount of customization. Mostly it is uh, the configuration related to the uh, superset config file, which I mentioned. But in some scenarios, like if you have like a custom uh, need uh, on uh, your uh, authentication. So you you have that capability to include those kind of uh, requirements also by some uh, further customization. And also like uh, custom OAuth 2. So OAuth 2 is not supported by default, but then again, this can be uh, con configured, <coughs> sorry, by, uh, by applying. So basically, by default, there's a, a, a server, like a, a security manager, sorry, a security manager, uh, which can be overridden by your own version of security manager, wherein you can add your code. Like for example, if you want to log out say every uh, one hour, or uh, if you want to say, uh, have some uh, like, some related login, which you want to handle through code. So any any specific requirements related to your authentication can be handled by your custom server, which you can add on top of your, uh, like the superset uh, default server by adding your uh, uh, custom code. So that is possible. And that is the level of uh, flexibility superset provides. Uh, moving on, the REST API. So again, this is a very um, powerful and useful feature of Superset, wherein all the data is available through REST APIs, and it, it really makes it very easy to access the data. So uh, like I was watching one of the videos uh, about Superset from 
one of the like uh, co-founders and they mentioned like many of the organizations are just using superset apis and building custom apps on top of it so it is uh, it is that useful that just by having an admin login if they don't want the same look and feel what superset is providing they are building custom apps all together just using the apis and the admins so those kind of uh, flexibility uh, can be attained by using these apis also features like if you have to say do some repetitive tasks which you don't want to do through front end you can automate through apis if you have to do one time data migration where there's a lot of uh, charts and uh, database tables which need to be migrated uh, through so you can do uh, upload download of the charts and dashboards uh, from your source to the destination so all that is possible through making use of these apis and customization uh, obviously so as i have already mentioned so many times so this uh, uh, because of the way uh, superset is structured and the kind of technology stack it has so it has your react redux and uh, for your front end with supported by your Fla uh, flask app builder uh, for the back end uh, apis so uh, latest technologies and all the sources, uh, all the code is open source. So you have the flexibility to customize it. So you can build custom plugins using uh, your React framework or JavaScript. And then uh, you can import it as a, like an NPM package and use it. It is as simple as that. Also, you can extend the functionality by adding custom Python as applicable or your custom uh, like SQL. Also, uh, there's a concept of Jinja templates, which give you additional, uh, like you can say, additional power to your SQL queries. You can write custom SQL just because you can add those extra parameters in your queries, uh, which can dynamically get applied to your charts. So that is a very uh, like good power as in you can control access. So for example, if I just want to uh, show the data for a specific user, so there is a parameter for current user ID. Now I can add that additional parameter and I can filter out the data for that specific user or role. So that level of uh, security can be achieved. So I will uh, quickly jump on to some of the uh, uh, features. I can show it uh, live on uh, the superset instance. Sorry, yeah. Um, so, and yeah, one more thing which I forgot to mention is, uh, so there is a cloud version of Superset which is called Preset. And it is again, a very, uh, you can say useful and uh, the ease of, or avoiding the pain of maintaining an instance if you use Preset, but then it comes with a cost. So it has its uh, lic licensing. Uh, per user cost, which is uh, associated with it. So, so uh, yeah, to start with, like uh, what we have here is um, on-premise version of uh, Superset, which we have installed. So you can see the flavoring of a customized icon uh, and uh, the look and feel. So that kind of customization can be done. Now here, if you look at the settings, so first thing is uh, how you are going to attach or associate a new database. So this is where you, uh, in fact, let me start. So this is the normal user login. And then I, I'm, I'm brought to the home page. I can have a view of the dashboards which are already available. Now, if I have to add a new dashboard, I would first need a database connection. So I can go here and add a new connection. And uh, these are like the default ones, but then 
uh, there is, as uh, Shubham already mentioned, so there are available drivers for most of the common and popular uh, data sources and databases. So you can select <laughs> from the list here and uh, you can uh, give your connection uh, string. So let me show you something which is available. So for example, this is a snowflake one. So you, you can give your uh, SQL alchemy is the tool or the framework which actually allows you to connect to all these different uh, databases. And uh, it, uh, so you have an alchemy a driver or connector for most of these. And that is what is used here. So you give the connector and then you test connection. So it's, okay. So you can just uh, close it. Now going to, and you can also like, if you can directly upload a file, and use it for, as your data source. So that is also possible. Now, once you have, so this is the SQL lab feature, which gives you an exploratory experience on top of your database. You can have a view of what, uh, so you select the specific uh, database and then it will show you the schemas, the tables you can select and you can query on them. And uh, you can uh, run those queries. You can see the result here. And uh, you can actually, uh, so you can then create a chart out of it. So this, uh, this allows you to select that data and then create a new chart. Now, once you come to this create chart, so here you can give the name of the chart. You can give the different columns you want to use. Uh, and uh, if you have like what metrics you want to show. So these are the columns you want to show. Uh, if there are any metrics which you want to, apply so that can be added here and then you can save the uh, chart once you have saved the chart it will appear here and then you can actually uh, directly also create a chart from here uh, once you have created the chart then you can like uh, drag and drop into your dashboard so these are some of the existing dashboards and you can see like the look and feel aspect can be monitor uh, modified by using CSS. So since it is all uh, React JS, JavaScript technologies. So basically if you edit the dashboard, you can, ha you have an option to edit the CSS. So the basic look and feel, the colors can be modified here by uh, looking for the uh, specific elements on HTML and adding the styling to it. So you can uh, load some existing template or you can directly add your editor, like add your styling. To it. So that is like the first level, uh, you can say look and feel, which you can achieve uh, from here. Also, um, if you look at the different charts, so this is one example. So you have a filter which by default is provided, so you can add filters here, or you can uh, like by design of your uh, uh, chart itself, you can include filters. And then uh, you can, so this is an insurance dashboard, which is showing that uh, the sales for different agencies uh, across different uh, uh, like uh, categories. So if you see like um, the different plans and how the funnel is uh, dropping, which is the most uh, um, high selling plan and then how it is coming down. So you can see uh, the visual <coughs> effect of these. Uh, also, like if you want to drill to detail, so uh, this is the thing what Shubham was talking about. So you can, it will show you the exact uh, data. If you drill to detail, then you can get into the details of what the data is and you can look, look through that. So, so this, uh, yeah, and the other important aspect is the uh, roles. So here you can see the list of users and the list of roles. Now, by default, you have this admin, public, alpha, gamma. Uh, so admin being having all the access and alpha has uh, access, all the access, but uh, it cannot, I mean, uh, alpha users cannot give access to other users and gamma has restricted access. And then uh, like SQL lab is access to the SQL lab. So based on what the user should be uh, performing, you can allocate the roles to the user and you can create uh, 
custom roles also. So now here, if you see, so for the user, the, so user can have multiple roles assigned based on the need. And also there is this concept of role level security, wherein if you want to restrict the data specific to, uh, like for a specific role, adding some additional condition. And so this is how, like using this uh, role level security, you can achieve it. And uh, if you're going to edit, so basically uh, you can give a role name and then the table on which you want to give the condition. And then you can give the, so basically this gives you a flexibility of adding the where clause to the query of the table or the view. And then with that, you can actually add. So as I mentioned, the Jinja templating part. So here you can add those uh, as an additional uh, condition. So if I want to filter the data for a specific user only, like the logged in user should see uh, the records pertaining to him only, him or her only. So you can add that extra condition that and user ID is equal to the current user ID. So there are some uh, like uh, available um, uh, micros in Jenja, which which are like uh, the current user and or the uh, current user name, the current user ID, and then there are a couple couple of more like the URL param. So if you can actually send parameters to the uh, URL also, like when you are invoking a, a, a call from somewhere else. So again, the data can be extracted from those also using the URL param macro. So again, that is a really powerful feature which uh, gives you control over your data and you can add that extra layer of security. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, I think, yeah. So this the same look and feel you can get in the preset also. So uh, like I had a few dashboards to show here also though. So, and uh, to start with, if you want to play with, you get a 14 day trial also, which gives you a feel of how superset is. And then once you uh, like uh, get comfortable, you can decide to uh, do it either on cloud or on premise have your own managed uh, instance as well. Uh, also, um, I mentioned uh, the, uh, yeah, the embedding. So embedding is another feature, like if you want to embed your dashboard into some other application. And this is one example, which I wanted to show. So this is a in-house application for uh, profile management at Walking Tree. So we have uh, embedded the uh, superset dashboard here, you can see. So you have the capability to uh, like embed and seamlessly. So uh, you would have to handle the session for login. And that is uh, like, that can be done having a guest login at your superset end and then uh, sending a guest token from your uh, like main application, which is actually embedding Apache Superset. So that can be handled and then the login is seamless and uh, you can like, you can develop your charts in Superset and you can embed it in your application and you can get, get a complete package of your, uh, uh, like how you want to have your application. So uh, that is like, that is the power of, or the flexibility which you can get. And it being a open source tool, so you don't have to worry about the per user license. So yeah, so this was uh, one more thing. And uh, lastly, maybe I'll show you the APIs also. So basically, if you want to explore the APIs of Superset, so it has a good uh, swagger uh, documentation where you can look at the different APIs which are available. So uh, be it the current user, the charts, the dashboards, so you have APIs for everything. So you can, uh, in fact, you can actually uh, like modify the data because it's not only get, you can do a post also. So you can actually, like if you really have that uh, level of understanding and that level of control of how the uh, code is, uh, you can actually modify the charts using these APIs. I mean, it's that powerful. And uh, you can actually, so, just, uh, I, I just tried out. Uh, so like the use of APIs is also very easy. So it's 
like uh, on in python you can easily import your uh, uh, like your uh, credentials for the base url and you generate an access token then you attach the token to your uh, like the token has to be attached to every request after that so first you generate the token and then you attach so getting the list of charts so again this will uh, so this will give you the list of charts you can see here so this is so basically this data will also be cached like if you have a lot of data so it will give you like uh, maybe 20 items at a time so you can see all the data about that uh, dashboard in this api so same way like uh, depending on your requirement you can actually use these apis to get the data and show it in your application uh, and uh, not use uh, directly use superset so different ways of how you can use it uh, in a very flexible way in your enterprise um, so with that i think i'm already quite past the planned time so yeah let me take a pause here and let's get back to the presentation so yeah i just wanted to finish on this slide so like if you are even getting started on your data journey um, you can just look at the kind of uh, giants which are using superset and uh, that should uh, instill enough confidence for this as a very powerful visualization tool. So um, that is all from my side. So thank you and over to you, Pranshu. So do we have any questions? Thank you, Abhilasha. We have had quite a few questions and I think uh, Shubham has answered most of them. We still have a few left. Uh, like uh, we have one question from Enrico. Can the charts be bad to update in real time for streaming data? Can the charts be bad to update in real to time? To update in real time for streaming data. So um, like there is an auto sync feature, uh, which can be uh, auto refresh feature rather, which can be used by having like a lower frequency of the refresh so that they can um, detect the changes in real time and handle the data. Sure, as in, uh, I'd answered this question, I mentioned that you can use, you can keep a lower value of auto refresh for handling real time data. And uh, I think the question has been rephrased also. So the question now is, can a charge be bad to update in real time for streaming data? Uh, to an extent, uh, I do not fully understand that because see if it is real time data and you want to present real time data in charts, of course, the charts have to be updated on the question, whether a uh, superset will be able to handle the real time updates in a proper way. Uh, of course it will, because as I mentioned earlier, and most when you integrate with Apache charts, those rendering capabilities are quite powerful now. So you will not have that overhead with superset where the data, which is being generated in real time will actually collapse the framework that won't happen. And of course, uh, what Abhilash mentioned in the beginning, you have this sort of refresh, auto refresh where you can set that time very slow, very low to make it happen in real time. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions from Svetlana. Is the cloud version free? Uh, no, it's not free. Uh... It has a 14 day trial version, uh, which is free after which there is a, like, I think, uh, the lowest charge is some $20 per, per user per month. Uh, so the cloud version is not free. Okay. All right. Thank you. There's another question from her. Are there any libraries for embedding? Uh, yeah, so there is an embedded uh, SDK, which is used uh, for embedding, and uh, it helps generate a URL, which you can embed into your application. And uh, as I, like I earlier mentioned, so you, you'll have to handle the uh, sign-in capability from your uh, main application, 
by handling like a guest token kind of uh, uh, which gets passed for the authentication in SuperSet because you cannot make your uh, like URLs public. Uh, so there has to be some authentication and that is handled uh, through your uh, um, guest token and uh, embedding through your embedded SDK, which will generate a, a URL and that can be embedded in your application. All right, we just have a couple of questions more. A Russian wants to know, are companies like Google using this? So there are organizations like Twitter and Dropbox, which are using Apache SuperSet. And as I'm so I'm not sure about Google though, but yes, big tech like Twitter does use Apache SuperSet. Also, as I mentioned, uh, one of the reasons for that is that SuperSet is quite scalable. Uh, companies like Airbnb, they use SuperSet because it runs, they have production clusters in Kubernetes and they need concurrent requests by users for charts to be handled very well. And SuperSet allows that. So whether or not Google is using, there are plenty of other organizations, big organizations which are using SuperSet because of its scalable uh, uh, nature. Right. Uh... One question from Raju, what is the least auto refresh rate to update the charts? I mean, one minute, two minute and so on. So the use case that he's referring to is ingesting the sensor data periodically and updating the charts by minute. So, uh, I mean, it depends on the periodicity. So for this particular use case, so when you're having sensor data, if it is coming per minute, uh, you can keep that also in your super set i mean it's not it's it won't work for it uh it wouldn't help if one were to keep it in nanoseconds but a minute is fine all right and just one last question uh, we have from jish how does it compare with data studio locker looker sorry data studio looker sure so uh well a couple of points so Looker is again not open source. So from that perspective, super set looker is since it is not open source, it's paid. Uh superset fares better. Looker is not customizable. Looker is not open source, you can't customize it to that you can't extend it to that extent as you would do with superset. Uh superset is better in terms of uh, its containerization capabilities uh, and running on cloud native technologies like Kubernetes. Uh Looker uh there are other features for Looker, which actually uh, I don't remember right now as in, in terms of other features on in terms of uh, the exact rate. So as anyway, whatever the rate for Looker is, it's not uh, free. So that says, in that sense, Apache SuperSet is much better. So I, I, I really don't remember the number of visualizations which Looker would support, but SuperSet, uh, the good part is even if the number of visualizations supported by Looker were more, which I doubt would be the case, but even if they were, uh, SuperSet is fast completing. In fact, the rate of growth in charts in SuperSet in the recent years has been far more than other technologies. Right. Thank you, Shubham. Thank you, Abhilasha, and thank you, Scott. And thank you all for being so patient and being part of this session. I hope this was informative and useful to all of you. I hope to see you in our future sessions. And for anyone wanting to go through this again, uh, we would obviously be sharing this with all our registrants. So you can look for you can look forward to a recording of this in your emails in a couple of days. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.